Okay, hi everyone. So in this video, we are going to look at putting your project API keys in your SvelteKit project. So there's two keys, and I just made a video about this, the difference between the two, but you've got your public one and your secret service key. So these are your two keys, and they both use your URL um, in combination to access data. So here I'm using Gitpod um, in environment. I would put your so you prefix public, which means people can see this and it's okay. This can go in your front end code. Uh, but normally environment variables are meant to be secret and you don't want people to know about them, otherwise you get hacked. So your secret key, your backend key, um, that's gonna go here in lib slash server. That way super based or uh, Svelkit knows that this is server only code. So no one should be able to see this on the front end. So here you can import them like this. Uh, so we have a secret key from the private one. And then because it's public, uh, it's from an env static public. So these get pulled out of the environment, this .env file. And then you create your uh, client like this. And then here in your just normal lib, supabase, it's pretty similar. Oh, let me just reformat that. But this one, both of them are public. So they both come out of here public superbase, so here's the public key versus the secret key. Okay, so you need to put it here in server so that Svelkit will warn you if you're trying to put that in front end code because that can be a big confusion here and issue um, with this type of framework where you have it all together. You wanna make sure your, your secret environment variables stay secret. So here, for example, in my page.svelte, if I try to import the Supabase server one from server, it'll say you can't import it into the client side code. So, I mean, it should already be obvious because there's server there, but this just makes sure that you're not exposing environment variables. And same with page.ts, if I try to do that, uh, it should also warn me, okay, because page.ts runs on server and on the uh, client. So let me check though if I say export um, const CSR equals oops, uh, equals false, would that be fine? I think so. Yeah. So because I'm not, I'm no longer rendering on the front end and it's only server side rendered, now it's okay to do this. Um, but in general, you probably just want to put it in your dot server files like this this load function. Okay, so that's how I would set it up so that you have your server only super base and then you have your super base code that can go on the front end. And it can go on the back end sometimes, but mostly it's for the front end. Okay, that's all for this video.